This is a, a simple experiment I did at my home for cheap. <laughs> I took a piece of iron and a file and filed it and made iron dust. And I put the iron filings in a salt shaker and sprinkled them on the paper. Every time I sprinkle it, I get a random pile. So if I throw this away and do it again, I get a random pile. But the next experiment, more expensive, I buy a magnet. Now I sprinkle the filings, and what do I get? I get the magnetic field shaped by the filings. And the significance is very important. The filings without the magnetic field are random, but when I put the field in, the field shapes matter. And the significance is, is by Albert Einstein. I'll, I'll make a, a quote from Albert Einstein. The field is the sole governing agency of the particle. And so that the, sh the energy invisible fields shape matter. Can you explain the pattern of the iron filings if you do not understand the field? Yes or no? No. Can you understand the pattern of my cells in health and disease if you don't understand the field? So this is why medicine has failed, because it wants to understand the structure of health and disease, but does not include the field in its understanding. And so the field is the sole governing agency of matter. Particles are matter. So your life, your physical life, is controlled by the field, and that's from Albert Einstein. So that our understanding uh, of physics says that uh, medicine does not understand disease because it only focuses on the particles and on matter. So Newtonian physics said study only the body. And quantum physics says no, quantum physics says matter and energy are connected. The new physics, we bring the mind, which is energy, back to the body, and the relevance is just from what Albert Einstein said. So the mind is the field, and it gives shape to the body. So what you are believing and what you are thinking so changes like your body. So in, when we see people, like if I look at the audience or you see us, we see people as physical particles and machines. But that's an illusion, because what we are are interacting waves. That's why one person can affect another person just by being in the field. So we go back to science and we say, this is not correct. There's a new mathematics that's important called fractal mathematics, which explains our physical universe. A new physics, quantum physics, which explains the world in terms of energy. A new chemistry called electrochemistry, which deals with vibrations of atoms. And biology and psychology did not bring the new science in yet. By definition, biology and medicine are not scientific. In, when cells were first named, in 1600, Lewin Hook was looking at dead plant tissue. And he saw the cell walls around the, plant, the cells, the, the cellulose walls, but the cells were dead, so they were empty, empty spaces. So he called these spaces cells, like prison cell or... But it's the wrong, that's the wrong name. But today, the word cell means something different and it's more appropriate. Because the word cell is used for the word battery, like flashlight cell or dry cell or wet cell. Every cell in your body has a minus voltage on the inside and positive voltage on the outside. Every cell, every live cell is a battery. Every cell has about 1.4 volts, not too much. Aber, but 50 trillion cells in the body times 1.4 volts is 700 trillion volts of electricity in your body right now. And with training and meditation, you can focus this energy called chi. 
And you can use that energy for healing. With, with that much voltage, people can self-combust. Assumption number one, false. All right. Assumption number two, genes control biology. In the textbooks, they talk about the nucleus controlling the cell. And that's in today's textbooks in grammar school through medical school. And the nucleus has the DNA, and the DNA is believed to be the control. As I said before, every function in your body is already present in every cell. So where you have an organ in your body, the cell has an organelle, which means miniature organ. So the textbooks talk about the nucleus is equal to the brain. Uh, watch. If you remove the brain from an organism, the organism dies. But if you remove a nucleus from the cell, the cell lives and the behavior is unaffected. Some cells can live two or more months with no genes, and they carry out all of their normal functions. So enucleation is not removing the brain. So the nucleus is not the brain. But the nucleus does something. When you take out a nucleus, the cell cannot reproduce its parts or itself. So the nucleus is not the brain. The nucleus is the gonad. Since science is a male uh, business, and since men think with this organ, they <laughs> made it the brain of the cell. The nucleus does not control the cell. The nucleus is reproduction of the parts. But we went and looked for, um, to find all of the genes that make up a human. And the Human Genome Project was going to be the last biology project. Because once we knew all of the genes, then we would be able to control anything in a human being. It takes one gene to make a protein. There are 150,000 different proteins. How many genes do you need? 150,000. How many genes did we find in the Human Genome Project? 23,000. There's a problem. There are not enough genes to make a human being. So what is wrong is our belief. We are completely wrong about our belief that genes control life. So genes do not control life. The fact so assumption number two, false. Wrong. Wrong. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> um, in my research, 40 years ago, I started working with stem cells. People think that stem cells are something new. But I learned very many things from the stem cells. The secret of life I learned from stem cells. Right now, in every one of you, you have stem cells throughout your entire body. And these stem cells can replace any tissue or organ in your body. And you should be able to stay young for hundreds of years, as Greg will talk about. So you might ask, then why do we age? And the answer is because the mind controls the cells and the genes. And we collectively believe in aging. So that my research, early, early research, I have a tissue culture with multi-potential stem cells. These are clones, meaning they're all genetically identical. In my experiment, I take a group of cells, so I take this group of cells and put it into another Petri dish with a different environment, environment A. And environment A, the conditions of the medium, the stem cells form muscle. But I could go back and take the very same genetically identical cells and put them into culture dish with environment B, and the cells form bone. Or I could go and take the very same cells and put them in culture dish C with a different environment, and the cells form fat. 
what controls the fate of the cell? The environment. They were genetically identical, only the environment was different. So I published this work in 1977, and it's a, a fine structural analysis of normal and modulated cells in myogenic culture. It sounds like Latin. But in, it sounds like Latin, and so science is like the church. So you can't understand what I'm talking about. But what is the meaning? Is that this is the first scientific report that I made? How the environment controls the fate of your cells. And I use the word modulated, meaning altered, because there was no other word. My colleagues were not interested in this work because they were interested in the human genome. So I left the uni. I left. I had tenure, and I walked out of the university as a professor. I left the university because they were not being scientific because they didn't want to understand this. So I end up at a better university, the Stanford University Medical School. Uh, there, I repeat the experiments, but more sophisticated, and I uh, get the cover of the journal uh, differentiation. But I really wanted the cover of Rolling Stone. But it's science. So after I do this again, the scientists were not interested. So I left the university for the second time, and I write my book on the biology of how cells work. And in my chapter two, I lay out the scientific evidence to show you genes do not control biology. I also introduce you to the exciting discoveries of epigenetics, a new field of biology that is unraveling the mysteries of how the environment uh, uh, influences the behavior of cells without changing the genetic code. And I call chapter two: "It's the environment, stupid." It's a takeoff from、uh, President Bill Clinton's campaign, saying it's the economy, stupid. And five months after、uh, I write this, people are saying, "What do I know? I'm not at a university, so what do I know?"、And、then、uh, Nature, in the one of the most prestigious journals in the world, Nature, five months after my my book, an article call about. Stem cells are engaged in a constant crosstalk with their environment. Biologists are fast realizing. No, some of them not too fast. What do you think they call this article in Nature? It's the same story. Science is now saying what I have been saying for thirty years is coming around now, and that there's a new science of how cells work. After lunch. I will show you the science of actually how the cells work, and you will have more knowledge than most doctors in the world today, because they still believe in the genes.